long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, we talked about the fact that C language is incapable of holding names, statements. Essentially, C doesn't have anything called a string. It doesn't have that capability. It cannot hold someone's name. The best it can do is just to keep one letter, and that's it. F, not far that. It can't do that. But we can always play tricks on that. What is the trick? Uh, now we know arrays. We know that I can, uh, in one shot, create 50 integers. In one shot, I can create 50 doubles, 500 doubles, 5,000 doubles if I want. Right? I can do that. And what is a name? What is a statement? What is a sentence? That's essentially an array of characters, right? So you put series of characters back to back. So F-A-R-D-A-D, -D, that's six characters, right? So if I have an array of six characters, I can hold my name in it. The problem is that you called him? Yeah. No quiz today. It was a lie. Uh, okay. So, sorry. So, <laughs> Did everybody, I, wish, I wish I was recording like, the faces of people to not only the lecture, because his face was amazing. Like, if it was laser, like, that guy would have been. Um, so, for that, six characters. So if I create an array of six characters, I can hold my name in it. What if my name was Lee? Three characters. What if it's Lee L-I? Two characters. What if it's my last name? S-O-L-E-I-M-A-N-L. -E oh, 11 characters, for heaven's sake. The problem with my solution for a string is that I cannot deal with it like a variable. If you hold an integer, if you have an integer, you say integer A. You hold 25 in it, it's going to be 4 bytes, right? If you hold 2 million in it, it's going to be four bytes. If you hold minus five in it, it's going to be four bytes. No difference. When you select a type, it has a range. You can go minus two billion something, positive two billion something, and that's the range. But within that range, it's not going to change. The size is not going to change. And if you have the value six million, you overwrite it with one, the whole six million is going to evaporate, and one is going to take its place. Are we okay with this? These are all obvious things that I'm telling you. You're going to say, well, well, why are you telling me these? Problem is that, okay, I can fix the problem with the name thingy that I, that I was talking about. What is the longest name you've ever heard? Mine? Minus six, Fardad, F-A-R-D-A-D. I'm sure somebody's called Alexander here. <laughs> so it's what, 20 characters? I'm talking about, I'm not talking full name, I'm talking about name. 20 characters? What I could do is to create an array of 20 characters and put the name in it. Of course, some of the characters, elements of the array will be unused. If I have 20 characters and I put fart out, F-A-R-D-A-D, 14 characters are going to go to waste. But well, still good. I have no problem with that. I have lots of memory. I can do that. And if I read any other name, it's going to be OK. There is one problem. When I read the name Fardat from the screen, of course, I have to read it character by character. So I have to read one character. To, I have to keep going character by character until I get to new line, backslash n when they hit enter, right? So I put Fardad in an array, life is beautiful. And the next person that I'm reading is Lee. And I want to overwrite Fardad with Lee. Right? What's going to happen? L is going to overwrite F. E is going to overwrite A. And the second E is going to overwrite R. So it's going to be Lee dat. Because DAD remains at the end. That's problem. It's not like an integer when I have a million and I put one, the whole million is gone and one replaces it. I have to come up with a solution. The solution is actually pretty simple. 
I can say, all right, I can start putting the characters inside the array, but after I'm done, I can mark the end with an impossible character to impossible ASCII code, an ASCII code of nothing, something impossible. I cannot mark it with an X. Maybe the guy's name is Alex, and it can't be. So I have to use some ASCII code that is not used for any character. And the only ASCII code that is not used for any character is the ASCII code zero. They call it no. It's not the character zero. The character zero has a code. I don't know what is the code. Anybody knows what is the ASCII code of zero? Anybody? No? <laughs> I'm the teacher. I'm supposed to know. All right. ASCII table. So zero will be 48 actually, right? But if you look at zero, there is nothing. One is start of heading, two is start of text, three is end of text, four is end of transmission, five is inquiry, six, so they have meanings. Although, no, although we don't understand what the heck is that meaning, but they have a meaning. The only thing that doesn't have any meaning is the first one, zero, right? So what I can do is to actually create a, a character array, let's call it name. We said 20 max, right? And in here, I can actually do something like this. I can go one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So, so that's F A R D A D, and at the end I'll put a zero, not a character but the ASCII code zero. Therefore, now I can keep printing, keep processing the characters one by one until I hit the null. As soon as I hit the null, I'll stop. So if I want to set this to Lee, all I need to do is to set name zero to L, Name one to E, that's E, <laughs> E, name two to E, and name three to zero. So essentially, F will be overwritten by L, this one E, this one E, and this one's going to be overwritten by zero. The rest of them are still there, but who cares? It's after the stop sign, so nobody's going to look. It's there in the memory. Who cares? We don't need. We don't need. Because now that the end of the thing is set. Do we all understand the standard? Okay. <clears throat> now, I want you to put five ears on your head and listen to me. This is important. What you just heard is called a standard called string. String in C language doesn't exist. It's just set of rules that programmers follow to be able to hold text. You, can, you don't have a variable string. I cannot create a character name and another character, I don't know, name two and set name one to name two. I can't do that. They're not variables. I have to write a loop. One by one, I have to copy. I have to mark the end with zero. Lots of process. We don't have a variable for a string. Remember, okay? String is just the rule that we put the data, the characters inside the character array, and we terminate the end of it with a null character, with zero. So tomorrow you are going for IBM to get hired to write C program. As soon as they tell you what's the string in C, your answer will be a null terminated array of characters. That's it. So if I think 
that a name can be 20 characters. Is that correct to write? Should be 21. I need to always add a null at the end. So if you want to hold a, a name that needs six characters, you need to put seven elements. I'm, I'm not talking about arrays starting with zero and going up to, I'm not talking about index, I'm talking about number of elements, number of things. To hold data as character string inside the character array, you need always one extra element to put that freaking zero at the end, otherwise the most common type of mistake is going to happen. You put it like that, you get the name for 20, well, because you're following the standard, you set the 21st character to null, and that's when your program's going to crash, because you go one more than your length of your, your string. Are we okay with this? So remember, that's going to be the question in the quiz. I'm going to ask you, we have a name, I don't, I don't know, Alex. What is the smallest array of characters that I can put to hold Alex as a string? The answer is? Five. Are we okay with that? Are we okay? Ladies and gentlemen, we know what a string is now. All right? Now, this standard is followed. Oh, by the way, ask you a question. <clears throat> oh, too big, way too big. He's gone. <clears throat> no quiz, I'm going home. All right. <clears throat> well, um, what happened to my, all right. Come on, string. Copy. Hello. My question is this. Did I need to do this? If I write this, is it still be okay? Do I still have an alternative array of character? Or I do not? Oh. Based, on, based on the previous uh, session that I asked you, what happens when you initialize an array of character, an array, any type of array? What did I say? I say when you initialize an array of char an, an array, any type of array, and the number of initializations is less than the number of the elements of the array, the rest will be set to? So that zero is not necessary at all. If I just put F-A-R-D-A-D because the rest will be set to zero anyway, then it's going to be null terminated automatically. Actually, they said this is painful. Let's not do this. Whenever you want to create an array, a, a, a string, an array of characters following the rules of a string, just write this, and we'll do it for you. So this and the previous one are identical. That's why we have double quotes like that. Are we okay with this? So you're essentially initializing name to another array of character. Well, because the number of array of characters at right side is less than the array of characters of in le at left, it will set the rest to zero, therefore it's going to be null terminated. This is perfectly correct. And this one is horribly wrong. First of all, let's make that 21 because we said 20, okay? So let's say the last name is bigger, it's going to get 31. This is horribly wrong. Line four is perfectly okay. Line five and six is, oh my God, wrong. Why? Okay, one thing I have to tell you, okay? Uh, and we're gonna go, we're gonna talk about this later uh, when we are going through walkthroughs, okay? Whenever you are dealing with any code of, that you see, and you want to see how it works, you have to turn your intelligence to off. 
Okay, be dumb as a doorknob, look at the code and follow the rules only. Doing so. Give me line number. What you're saying is wrong, but no. Let's let's. I'm not. I don't want to analyze it, but it's wrong. Nah. My late friend. No, you're not dead. I mean, like. <laughs> what I mean is a my friend who's late. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, uh, it's because. Uh, Oh, you, you wrote char as well. Yeah, I was going to say maybe it's going to initialize it. It's going to mm. assume it's going to be numbered. So first of all, in line five, last name, will have 35 garbage characters in them because it's not initialized. Pardon me? 31 plus. 31 garbage characters, unknown values. Oh, sorry, I just figured it out. Uh, so after that, you just wrote last name yeah, uh, last equals, name. and you know, it, you assume that last name is not a variable. Uh, it's a variable. As a Thank person. you. Yeah. It's wrong. Last name is not a variable. It's an array. It has 31 elements. If I want to set it to Soleiman Lu, I have to write. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven assignments for every single element. Sorry, twelve, and set the last one to zero. Arrays cannot be set. They are not variables. They are collection of variables. That's not one thing. Assignment operator only works for one entity. An array is many entities. For that, I have to write a loop. Got it? You are not getting it yet, are you? Are we OK? <clears throat> Set your intelligence to off again, please, OK? We said initialization. You set an array to another array, which means at the moment of creation, when it's creating it, it fills it with the contents of this array, and that's done with it. That's how initialization works. When you are setting, initialization works like that. Setting works one entity at a time. Is last name one entity? It's 31 of them. If you want to set that, you have to do this. And I'm not kidding. It's not a metaphor for anything. That's how it works. If I want to set last name to Soliman Lu after creation, I have to go last name, zero, set to S. Next line. Last name one, set to, oh, you want me to go 13 of them? Please don't let me do that. And then L for two, and I keep going until I reach to <clears throat> Index what? 0, 1, 2, 3, 10, 11. Until I get to 0, 11, S 11, and I set that one to a 0. Dot, dot, dot. You cannot do this. You have to do it this way. I know it's a pain. Sorry. That's the way it's done. Of course, don't worry. There are helps. Well, you're going to see that. Things are written to make it work for you. Don't worry about it. But that's, that's down to this point. Are we OK with this? Yes? Oh, yeah, I could. But that's initialization. You cannot set it. it you have to understand the difference between the two. Halfway through your program, you cannot set a character or a to a name. You can't. It's impossible. You, if you want to do it, you have to do it character by character. Because it's an array. OK? At the beginning, you have one shot 
to set a string to something and that's moment of creation. Any time after that, nothing's going to work. You have to do one by one. Yes. One by one, loop using a loop or something. Uh, no. uh, oh, don't tell me you're, you're, you're telling me this because I'm going to come over there and beat you up. You're telling, can I do this? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, no that's not, that's not what yeah, that's what you're doing, right? If you make an array, you know, start last name two. Okay. So you mean last name two yeah. and initialize it to yeah. and then assign that one to the first. And then do what? And then just and then write and then write last name is equal to last name two? Yeah. How is that different with the name being set to that? <laughs> okay. See, you are craving for it to happen. It can't. People understand this. If I have, if I have, like how ridiculous it is if I have int a 5,000 that is initialized to some values, I don't care what, and I have int b 5,000, and I write, what, what can I, why can't I type? Something's wrong with me today. b set to a. You can't do this. That's 5,000 integers. One assignment won't do it. You have to have a loop that happens 5,000 times. One by one, you have to go index to index. Characters, integers, what's the difference? Right? This is wrong, and the other one is wrong too. Are we okay with this? All right? Not, I don't have even commented, not possible, because this is not compilable. OK? OK? So 0, 2, 0, 3, bad string. <laughs> bad string. OK. It's like bad boy. <laughs> OK, copy. Now I want to show you something. I'm going to pause. All right, so as I mentioned, because this thing is very old, and actually C language came out, when it came out, they actually put this thing in a standard library of C. Uh, so all the functions who need to deal with text would follow this standard. That's why they call it, call it a string. What we have to remember, string is nothing related to C. It's just the standard. But this standard is even built in into uh, printf. So I could actually do this. I can say printf percent %s percent, percent %s. So I can say my name is, and then go to new line. Oh, let's do this. First, let's print fardat. If I want to print fardat, I have to have an integer i. Then I have to say set to zero. I have to say while uh, name i is not equal to zero, right? While name i is not equal to zero, then printf percent c and name i. <clears throat> add one to i, right? And then at the end, I can say printf new line. Okay? So if I actually write, write such a program, it's going to print one by one, print uh, FARDAD one by one, and it's going to stop because it's following the standard, right? So essentially, I'm saying uh, is F0? No, print it. If A0? Is A0? No. Print it. R0? No. D0? No. A0? No. D0? No. The last one is a null, right? Is 0 not equal to 0? That's going to fail. 
it's going to go false, comes out, prints a new line. Are we okay with this? That's following the standard of uh, strings. But this is built in within printf. You can actually write printf. You can actually learn to type first. Okay, so printf and then say my name is percent s new line and then over here say name. So you only put the name of the array. So what happens is that it goes to the first element, prints it, keeps going until it hits the null, and then it stops. Are we okay with this? So, and this one, if you are 20, we have to make it 21. Let me put my last name over here. <clears throat> so if I actually run this program, I'm going to have my name is Fardat Salimandu, right? Correct? Now, let's look at this. I'm going to say name 10 is set to 0. And I'm going to print the exact statement again. What's going to get printed? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it overwrites E with null, correct? Therefore, the second one is going to print for that so. Is Imanlu gone? No. We still have the Imanlu somewhere in, 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 uh, in memory, but because it's after the null termination, nothing's going to happen. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right, now I'm going to pause. <clears throat> All right. So now, down to this point, we know kind of what strings are for, and that's as far as we go. At the end of the semester, you're going to learn uh, string header file. You see standard input output header file up there? We have a header file called string header file. String header file has lots of functions that let you easily work with strings. Copy one into another so you don't have to go through a loop. They're all written for you. Compare one with another, see which one comes in, in a dictionary to see if they are equal. Search for a piece of, like you want to look for dad in fardad. It finds the dad in fardad for you and tells you there is a dad in fardad. Things like that. There are lots of things that you do with strings. You can do it through functions written in string.h. We don't need it now. Okay, so that string, I just wanted you to understand what strings are. What strings are. Are we okay with this? Next thing, conditional operator. We did not talk about it. Uh, I just want to tell you what it is, um, and then we'll start our lecture. Okay? So a conditional operator is essentially an operator that is created to make special type of if but much faster than if statement. So if you have a program like this, for example, so you want to find the maximum of two numbers, you can write an if statement like this. So if num1 is greater than num2, max becomes num1. Otherwise, max becomes num2. And then you display it. OK? Whenever you have this type of scenario where you compare two things, and then you set a value to something, otherwise you set the value to something else. Whenever you have this type of scenario, you can use the conditional operator instead. That is much faster than an if statement. So in here you can say max is set to, then you write the comparison, num1 greater than num2. So if num1 is greater than num2, evaluate at send back num1. Otherwise, evaluate and send back norm2. So essentially, this little statement replaces this one. 
This is much faster than that one. There is one catch with this. These two must be of the same type, otherwise it won't work. Because there's a special... Remember I told you about assembly code? What is assembly? Machine code, okay? The translation of machine code of if statement and the conditional operator are two different things. When, because of the type of translation that it has and it make, that makes it much faster, these two must have the same type. Why? Because the sky is high, okay? That's the reason. To make it faster, you cannot have one of them a, a, a string and the other one um, an integer, okay? If they're a string, both of them has to be string. If they are integers, both of them have to be straight, uh, integer, and so on and so forth. Yes? Uh, yeah. Let's say you have max already set to a number, and you refer to itself, say max is equal to no one greater than max. Yeah, it's C language. The, and the, always remember, the right side of the assignment operator happens first. As a matter of fact, you can just ignore that. Like if the return, if you don't want to return something, if you, if you don't want to return something, you can simply say printf hoo hoo, whatever, and printf he he, whatever that means. Okay? It doesn't matter. Of course, printf returns both return and integer because they are the same type. They both return integer. It can work. All right? So that's conditional operator. And using the conditional operator that we have here, let me just compile it, make sure it's compilable. Yes, it is. All right. <clears throat> now let me open this one. Remember with the parallel arrays at the end, we said there is a grammar problem over here because if it's one, it shouldn't go students. Remember that? Okay, now I can actually write a proper program for here. I can actually write over here percent %s. Okay, now let me just break it into two lines so we can see what we are doing. <clears throat> and now, so... This pass plus just pass goes over here, right? Now these two together, if it, it's greater than one, I have to put an S. Otherwise, I should put nothing, correct? So what I will do, I'm going to actually write that exactly. So I'm going to say being greater than one. If it is greater than one, pass back S. Otherwise, pass back an empty string. <clears throat> And that's it. So this will go in here. This one will go in here. But what is the type of this conditional expression? It's a string, right? So <clears throat> if the value is greater than 0, an array of string will be passed that the first one is s, the second one is null. So it prints the s, it stops at null, right? It prints one character. If it, is, if, it's, if it is equal to one, the second one is passed. Because the second one is passed, as soon as it wants to print it, it hits the null, right? So it stops. So nothing gets printed over there. It becomes, so you don't have two spaces. It's going to be, so you can do it, uh, <clears throat> do the exact same thing over here. Try it, okay? <clears throat> Try to fix that yourself. Anyways, just the use of conditional. So if I didn't want to do that, I had to write an if statement to print tabs. And like this, I just put it over there. Because the types are the same, I can do it. Are we OK? Are we OK? All right. So that's that one. So 0, 06. in printf. <clears throat> C is language of functions. 
What does it mean? It means C is designed for you to write a collection of programs, small programs, that they call each other. But everything initiates from the very first, everything initiates from the first function, and that first function is always called main. Okay? So you are actually writing a function. You know how to write a function. You write its name, the type it returns, the type it receives, its body, and you write whatever you want. Okay? So writing a function, there is no problem. You just need to know how to call it. For main, you don't need to worry. Operating system will call it. And that's how your program gets executed, right? <clears throat> Functions in C language, as you see what they are, they have an entry point and an exit point. An entry point is a place where you put things and the function gets a copy of the information that you pass through it. It gets those values. Using those, it does some operation, calculation, interaction with user, whatever is needed. And if you ask it, it can return only one value. So either one or nothing. And that's what functions are in C language. They can get copy of several things as much as you want. You can pass 50 things to it, but you can only return one thing out of it, not more. And this is absolute truth. We can play tricks to make it look different, but this is reality. That's how it works. Okay? You can choose to pass nothing to a function, and the function returns you nothing. You can do that. And that is accomplished with keyword void. So whenever you don't want to any, pass anything to a function, you put void in it, like the main. If you don't want the function to pass anything back, you put a void over there where you put the integer for the, for the function. OK? So let's do that. Let's write our first function. In here, what I'm doing, I am printing a title. Welcome to assessment analysis program, right? So I'm just going to take that and put it in a function. How do I write a function? I want to write a function called title. Title's job is to print something for user. It doesn't return anything. It doesn't receive anything. It's just a show, right? So I'm going to go over here. Void, it doesn't return anything. Title, that's the name. And void, it doesn't receive, receive anything. And it just prints something. That's it. I wrote my first function. How do I call it? You write the name of the function. And you put parentheses in front of it. So any function that you want to call, the action of calling is putting parentheses in front of it. Now, if, you wanna, if the function <clears throat> is designed to receive something, you can put the values you want the copy of to get passed to the, to the function. It's your choice. But if you don't want to, that's what it is. That's how it works. So now if I run this beautiful program of mine, it works exactly the same way as it did before. The only difference is that <clears throat> when it reaches to title, it actually goes up in the title, executes that, and comes back down in here. The good thing about function, functions is that you can call a function many times if you need to. Oops. So now if I run the function one more time, <clears throat> so now if you look at debug, you have two things, F10, F11. F10, step over. F11, step into. <clears throat> if I am standing right above title, if I press F10, it runs title as one command. It's not going to go into it and walk through it. So as soon as I press F10, that's what I'm going to see. And it stands on the other one. Now I'm printing F11. When I press F11, it actually shows that it's going inside. So if you are doing walkthrough, that's your choice. So now it's printing it a second time. Now it's printing it a third time. So you can recall a function and over and over and over. And wherever you call it, it goes over there, picks the data that you want, and does whatever that you need to do. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Yes. Yeah. 
Use your opera voice. La, la, la. OK. Oh, yeah. It depends on your design. If your title is three sentences, put three printf's. Put 55,000 printf's if you want to. Maybe you want to put a license agreement over there, and a user wants to say yes or no. License agreement. Put 95,000 pages of things over there. Sure, you can do that. As long as that's what you have designed it to do. So functions are programs, and you are programmers. You can write anything you want in them. You can design them to do anything you want to do. For example, <clears throat> you see this line? I am printing a line, right? And then I have done it over here. I have to actually call count and see how many to make sure these two are the same. Why do I do that? OK, so it's actually printing about what, is, what do you call that line? What should I call that line? Divider? OK. So. So I'm going to call it void div, void, right? And then I'm going to say printf, right? So now that I have the divider created, I'm going to come over here. Where is it? Where was it? Right here. So in here, I'm going to say div. And down here, I'm not going to reprint that thing. It's, that's just ugly. I'm going to say div again. So now I know it's going to be divided between this and that. Right? But a divider is not always how many characters that is? Thirty-one. It's thirty-one characters. OK? What if I want it to be 42, 33? I want the length to change. So I can give it information now. I can actually say, hey, if you are creating a divider, tell me what is the length. And I'm going to do the divider for that length. And this is essentially keeping printing this assignment operator length times, right? So I'm going to say int i for i set to 0, i less than length, i plus plus. And in here, I'm going to say printf. Sorry. All right. And go to that one. And then right after, I'm just going to print a new line. Now I can come over here and put over here 31. Or maybe I can't, I want to print 50 over here. So the div that I have will have two different type of thing. Now if I run this beautiful code of mine three years later, first of all, it's showing me three titles. Let me fix that. Let me fix that just a second. You know what? Now I can actually have this. What is that div thing? How, how long is this? That's, that's uh, Column 11 down to, what is that, uh, 53. So that's 42, right? Or, I don't know. I guess it's 42. Now I'm going to say over here div 42. And I don't have to have two lines over here, two new lines, because it gets separated now. OK? Now I can run it, and when I run it, it actually draws a line underneath to the size I want. And I can reuse that code to have it whatever I want, whenever I want. So I don't know, I have two, and it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 78, and, th and that one, and this one is 31, and that one, for some unknown reason, I made it 50. I don't know why. OK, so now, as you see, I can reuse the function passing information to it. <clears throat> Are we OK with that? So that's a function that receives something. So you can pass stuff to it, right? You can actually put variables over there. So what you can do, you can actually have something like this. I know it's 
kind of stupid to do something like this, but I'll do it anyway. Int i, and I can say for i set to 42, i greater than 10, and i minus minus. I'm going to say print devs with length of i. Let's make that 35. I don't want to be too much. So now my program is going to be like that. It comes down or something. I don't know. Or if I want to make it look even different, more different, so I'm going to say minus equal uh, 5 to give it a slope, deeper slope. And the, oh. And that's 10. Now this is what I'm going to have. So as you see, <clears throat> it's passing a copy of i to div. So just to run it and show you how it looks like, I'm going to walk through it. So it comes in here, prints the title. I don't care about that. Now i sets to 42, so i is 42. So now I'm pressing F11, which means the control is going to go from here to the function. When it comes to the function, look at the value of length. It's 42. So it runs that with 42. How do exit the function? You can actually say execute the whole function and get out. That's shift F11. You see step out. It means run the whole function and get out. I'm going to say shift F11 and it runs everything and comes out. So this happened. Okay. Now, 42 is going to be reduced by 5, so it goes up and comes down. Now 42 is 37. Now I'll go in it. Now length is 37. So it passes a copy of i to length, and it uses that one to do whatever it wants to do. Are we OK with this? All right. So that's how you pass information to the functions. I'm going to mention one more thing, and then we're going to go for a break. Your main is the main thing. I don't want to have all these things at the beginning before the main starts. I want the main to be at the beginning of the function. The problem is that compiler, like C language by itself, is a dumb thing. It starts from the top and goes down. If I actually get the code of these functions and put it at the bottom of the code of the <coughs> of the program. When it compiles, it gets to title. It says, what the heck is a title? I don't know what's title. I never compiled anything called title. It's going to give you an error. OK? I always give this, this, this example. I can tell you, OK, that there's, there are tutors down in Learning Center that you can go ask help for. OK? If I never tell you there are tutors down in Learning Center, do you know that they are there? No, you don't. I have to let you know. Otherwise, how do you know? But if I tell you there are tutors down there, are they here to help you? No, they are not available. I just gave you the knowledge that they are out there. I introduce them to you. I, I tell you of their existence. And then later when you need it, when you need to call a tutor, you go down to Learning Center. Ah, there's a tutor. You ask for help. Or you go down to Learning Center. Is there a tutor? No, compiler. Sorry, linker error, error, not compile. Compiler, there was no compiler. I told you there's a tutor. Everybody accepted. Everybody's happy. When you actually go down there to see if there's a tutor to use it, if to call actually, to actually use and execute the function, if it's not there, then you're going to give me an error. This is exactly the same thing. I don't have to have all the functions listed at the top of the main. The only thing I need to do is to have their names up there. That's it. I don't need anything else. OK? So by doing this, I'm actually telling to the compiler, trust me, there is a title function somewhere. Compile everything at the end, you'll know. I don't even need to 
put the functions in the same file. I can actually remove the functions completely and put it in a separate file. <clears throat> Anal analyzer functions, bless you. Okay? And I'll just put them over there. Save. Of course, these are using printf, so I have to have those values, have those header files, spreader files over there because they are using it and it's a different file. I have to put them up there, otherwise, they don't know what the printf is. But if I do something like this, what happens is that, <clears throat> just take a look. Do you see a title function in here? No, it's just that. I right click on program and I'm going to say only compile this one. Look. Succeeded. Yay. And I can compile this one by itself. Analyze thingy. Compile. Succeeded. And then I build it. That's when everything comes together. So say this is called divide. Okay? Let's say I call it DDI. DDID. If I come into this program thingy of mine and I compile it, it still succeeds. This is the time that I'm telling you there's a tutor down in Learning Center and you trust me, everybody's happy. But as soon as I want to build it, then it's going to tell me, hey, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it should fail. Save everything. Did, I ch did it change the other one? No. Build. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I do something? I think so. Give me a second. That's PRG. No, no. R rebuild. Sorry. Still succeeded? Something's happened. Did I? What's going on here? Let me pause this. Yes, yeah, so if I remove and change the name of the function and I build the, the function, it's going to tell you that, hey, you were telling me, and as you see, it says LNK. That means linker. So what the compiler does, compiler compiles these separately. If I separately compile this program, it's a success. If I separately compile, if I compile that program separately, it's a success. So the functions are written correctly and everything, but the name over here is not right. In here I'm saying divider. Over there I'm saying divide, whatever it is. Now when I want to build this, essentially put everything together, compiler will first compile this, fine, then compiles that, fine. Then it puts everything together and checks to see that the functions that are called actually exist. If there is, it makes an executable. It's not, it's give you an error. That's called linker. To compile this on matrix, let me fix that first, so that's divider. To compile this code on matrix, what you need to do is this. You have to write GCC dash wall for all the warnings to be on, then PRG dot C. Then you write the name of the other files, whatever, how many files you have. It doesn't matter. So it's analyzer functions dot C and then dash O analyzer. So the name of the executable will be analyzer. <clears throat> so if you had five files in here, you put five files over there. Compiler first compiles this one, then compiles this one, then it calls the linker to put them all together, and that's the end of the compilation when it's actually get built. And the name of the executable would be analyzer. Are we okay with this? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, actually. Thank you very much. I didn't know. I looked at it and said, yes, I'm recording. <clears throat> Yeah, so next thing, 
You can pass much more than one copy of stuff in it. Watch much more than one uh, argument. These are called arguments. I can pass another one. For example, I don't want it to always use the, the equal operator character to print it. I want to change it to something else. So in here, I'm going to add another thing, a character. I'm going to call it body. And I'm going to go here, and I'm going to add that one. So it's going to be character body. And then I'm going to say in here, print percent %c and whatever the body is that is passed to me. Now, in here, I'm going to say let these two be the same thing that it was. That's, uh, so in here, I'm going to pass the same character, sorry, the, the, the assignment character. And in here, I'm going to pass the assignment character too. But up here, I'm going to say for the title, I don't know, use asterisk. So now function runs in two different ways in here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have asterisks, shows the thing with asterisk. And then one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, and and now it's going to actually use the other ones for the for the so so you can actually change so you can pass much more than one thing to a to a function, <clears throat> and there is another thing that I need you need you to know. First, let me make this one fifty. Doesn't make sense. I'm going to make it thirty-one. Save it <clears throat> now. Uh, in here, maybe length is too long, you want to make it length. And in here, you want to make call it ch. OK, so that's your divider. But when you are looking at the prototype, in here it says length and body. The names of the arguments that you write in the prototype of a function, these are called prototypes in the prototype of a function are irrelevant. You can actually remove them, and it will still work perfectly with no problem. OK? But even though some of my colleagues actually do that, never do that. Always, in the prototype, try to put meaningful names for the arguments so it actually helps the person that it's going to be you after three years to understand what the function does. So if I say divider int char, that doesn't tell me anything. But if I say divider with this length and that for the body, I understand kind of what's going on. So always put lengthy, meaningful names in your prototypes, always. So it becomes like a comment for the function. So you'll understand what the function is going to do. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? One? Yes. Yeah, so what you do in here is going to say character, body. Then you're going to say printf, please enter the character to draw the lines with. Whoops, sorry, this keyboard of mine is not the best. Okay. And then scanf percent %c, address of body. All right. And now you're done. Now in here, you can actually come and pass the body instead of that. OK? All right? It doesn't have to be literal values. You can put any value you want. Does that answer the question? Yeah. <clears throat> Or let these be the same. I'm just going to change this one to body. Where is it? Where is the divider? Oh, oh, I put it in the wrong place. Go up before the title, or actually after the title, or whatever. <laughs> so this is going to be body. 
All right? And that doesn't have to be body. You can call it anything. You can call it, I don't know, fill character. I do that on purpose because still people think that it, they have to be certain. If these are just variable names, you can use anything you want. Okay? Are we okay? Down to here? Are we okay? All right. In real life situation, you're going to have a configuration file where in that configuration file, you're going to mention what is what. And when the program runs, it opens the configuration file and reads exactly how the user interface is supposed to be. So uh, a, a system administrator, without changing and compiling your code, can go to the configuration file and change the values, and the system will change in, in shape. OK? Are we OK with this? So. Next thing, uh, let me just write over here, zero, six, um, custom line dot C. All right, so you remember. I don't want to have to ask too many questions in a program. Um, so that's, that's saved in custom line, OK? You can write a function that returns a variable to uh, a value to you, okay, without receiving anything. A perfect example for that could be simplifying, not simplifying, foolproofing the values that you are receiving for your integers. So you see in here I'm saying scanf number of marks. Instead of doing that, I can actually do this. I can say Number of marks. Was that the one? Number of marks, yeah. So number of marks is set to call a function get int. So I'm getting a function, getting an integer from the from the user. It doesn't receive anything from me, but it receives an integer from the user and returns it to me. So I'm going to write the prototype for it. It returns an integer. It's called get int. And it doesn't receive anything from other programs, from other functions. I'm going to compile it right now. And succeeded. So I haven't even written the code. And I can test my program to see if the syntax is correct. Now that I know what you want, what I want, I'll go over there and write a very simple version of it to see if it works properly. So in here, I'm going to say int, get int, void, I don't get anything. I'm going to get a number, so I'm going to say int num, scanf percent %d, address of num, and then return a copy of num out. Why do I say return a copy? Because as I mentioned, every time a function is called, it's as if a new program is running. It gets reset to its original values. And whenever the function is finished, everything gets wiped out and dies. So in here, for example, <clears throat> when the function gets called, len gets initialized to the value that is being passed to it. CH will be initialized to the value that is being passed to it. And I will have garbage in it. And when it's done, they all get destroyed and they'll be gone. So the next time the divider is called, new values will be provided for it and it starts from scratch. <clears throat> the reason I'm telling you this, that it's a copy that is sent out, is this. In this function, I'm going to have in get int function when it's called, a num number is going to get created with garbage in it. Then it's going to get scanned from the keyboard. User is going to enter it. The value goes in num, and it returns out. If it returned the number itself out, the variable num out, when get int is over, the num is destroyed. The value will be evaporated, right? Because of that, you have to always say it this way. It returns a copy of the number out. It returns the value inside the number out, not the number itself. So 
now if I run this program, it comes right over here, prints the title, prints the divider, so many times, I don't know why I did that, bad boy I am. Okay, seriously, okay. Now it's going to say praise enter a number, now it gets to get int. The function is being called, nothing is being passed to it. <clears throat> so it goes directly to the function. In the function it creates a num that is garbage and reads it from the keyboard. Because it's called at the proper place, it's going to read it. Now I'm going to say over here 2 and I hit enter. 2 will be placed in num and the two value 2 will be returned where it was called, where is in here. So get int return 2. It's not still there. I have to execute the complete the statement. As soon as I complete it, number of marks becomes 2. And it's done. So it actually returns one thing out. This is not foolproof yet. You have done evaluation in your temps workshop, correct? Where user enters values and you have to check to see if the value is between minus 40 and 40. Remember that? We want to do the same thing in this int thingy. But for that, we have to understand how actually the keyboard works in Scanf. Scanf does what we call a buffered entry. When I say buffered entry, what does it mean? So we're going to analyze. How do I analyze it? I'm going to say this. When, you, when somebody asks you, how old are you on the computer? When you want to enter it, how do you enter it into the computer? Analyze it. De in detail, explain it to me. You sat in front of the computer, a prompt came out. Please enter your age, and the cursor is blinking. What do you do with the keyboard? Seriously? <laughs> what do you do with the keyboard? The numbers, let's say 39. Three, nine, and then what do you do? Plus the enter key, and pop, everything goes, right? So if you put three, nine, and you don't hit enter key, you can still fix it. Why? Because the data is in a buffer. It's not flushed into Scanf yet. As soon as you hit the enter, it means pop, send everything. So three, nine, and enter will go into Scanf and scanf starts reading. OK? That's called buffered entry. Now, <clears throat> how many different ways user can enter an integer? You can, user can be sane. The sane human being enters the number and hits enter key. Right? So what happens? Num is going to have what in it? 999. And enter remains in a buffer because nobody picked it up. Correct? User can enter space 999 and hit enter. A little cuckoo, but OK. It's all spaces. It's going to skip it until it reaches to something. Oh, it's an integer. It's going to read it and put it in num, correct? And enter remains in a keyboard, in a buffer, because it's not read. <clears throat> User enters 999 and says, I, I just entered 999 and hits enter. So what happens now? Computer starts reading. 9 is an integer, good. 9 is an integer, good. 9 is an integer. 999 goes in num. I just entered 999, will remain in keyboard, waiting for the next scanf to come. Now, if that scanf reads an integer, what happens? It's like you're telling to the user, how old are you? User says, 52, and hits enter and thinks gladly that entered the perfect thing. F, can it be converted to an integer? No. So scanf won't even bother to put anything in the num. 
and just crashes. It doesn't crash, actually. It just skips. And num remains the same, and all these things remain in the keyboard. The next scanf comes. If there is a number again, it skips. So it's going to be an endless loop. So we're going to fix that. How can I guarantee that user actually entered something correct? When you think about it. If right after reading the number, an enter key is read, it means we are good, correct? And nothing can be after the enter key because that flushes the information, correct? So what I can do, I can create a second variable in here. Call it character. I'm going to call it new line because that's what I expect. And then right after percent %d with no space, I'm going to have a percent %c with a new line. All right? In first case, what's going to go in num? What's going to go in new line? Uh, 999 is going to go. Uh-huh. And new line will have what in it? Nothing. No, it's going to have enter. New line. It's going to have backslash n in it. Enter keys backslash n. When you hit enter, actually a character goes in. And that's backslash n. So new line becomes backslash n. For the second line, my lady, what's going to be? No, no, no. 999 goes to num, and then after 999 is what? New line will be entered. Backslash n. Good. What's going to have now? Uh, 999 to num and i to. New line. So new line is not, and what remains in keyboard is oost, enter 999, enter, right? Because u remains. Oh, sorry, just. Just enter 9. So space just. So i will be read, and the space will remain in the keyboard with the rest of the stuff waiting to come. So now I can actually detect. <clears throat> I can actually write a condition. How do you evaluate the values in, in, in the assignment? With a what? With a while loop, right? So I can simply say while the new line is not a new line. It means what? User is nuts, <laughs> right? If I don't have enter after that, it means something's wrong. Now I have to fix it. So immediately I'm going to say printf invalid integer u e. No, I'm not going to say that. Please try again. Okay, I want to say you idiot. Okay, right? And then I have to remember, and then you read again, right? So, and then I have to do the exact same reading again. There is a problem. The problem is, she's too busy with her computer, so I'm going to talk to you. All right. The problem is, if this happened, let's walk through this together, okay? What's going to be in num? What's going to be in new line? I, correct? Now, there's a space, correct? So it comes in here. New line is I. It's not, not, it's not backslash. And it comes in. It prints invalid integer. Please try again. Now it tries to read the num, correct? Skips the space. Then what do we have? Can it read the J? No. So num will not have anything in it. Therefore, new line will not be read too. As soon as it hits a wall, it stops. Goes back up. New line is still i right endless loop invalid integer invalid integer so if i actually run this program if i enter over here two here you are and hit enter this is what i'm going to get it's actually the error message let me see if i can pause it where's my mouse see invalid integer person it keeps doing that right so what do I need to do? Whenever, whenever you go to the washroom and you see there is something in there, what do you do? Flush. You flush. And if you're 100% sure that there is something in there, you flush anyway, right? That's exactly what we're going to do over here. 
when invalid entry, entry was done, it means there is garbage in the keyboard. Flush it before you read again. I have to get rid of the thing. So how do I flush the keyboard? I'm lazy. Flush keyboard. When writing a program, procrastination is your friend. Whenever you see something that you don't know what to do, imagine a function for it. Write it at the top, and then later on you're going to write it. So flush the keyboard. How do I flush the keyboard? I'm going to write the function. I don't need to send it anything. I don't need to get anything from it. I just need to flush it. So I'm going to say over here. Yeah. So I'm going to say over here void. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to say over here void flush keyboard void. How do I flush the keyboard? I have all this in a garbage, in, in, a, in a, I have all this inside my keyboard, right? What is the only type in a, in a computer that you can read and it reads everything? If you read an integer, there might not be an integer. If you read a double, they might not be a double. But when you read a character, there's always something, right? So I'm going to read character by character by character by character until I hit enter. When I hit enter, it means keyboard is clean now. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say character junk. Then I'm going to say do, because I know there is junk. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called flush, right? while junk is not equal to backslash n, keep reading a character and put it in junk. So what happens now? Num will have 999. New line will be i. It comes in here, invalid integer. This will read the list until it hits the enter. And scanf faces a blank keyword and waiting for the next thing to come in. Now, if I run this beautiful program of mine, I can come over here and go hit enter. Ta-da. If I write 12 and then like that, still garbage. If I enter 10, now it actually accepts it. And it starts. So I can reuse this get int of mine anywhere I want to make sure user will not let pass this thing until a valid integer is entered. Are we okay with this? This is um, uh, something that I had to mention. So this is the end of the lecture. Let me just uh, stop it.